Hi guys, welcome to another toddler activities video. Although I do think this one probably even goes to preschoolers as well. So I've done these activities with my daughter when she was 22 months and two years, 10 months. So there's a big span there and we'll probably be doing some of them next year. But as always with my activities, they need to be supervised by an adult and use your discretion. Each child is different. Each child develops differently at different rates. So follow your child. Before we get into it, I want to share two reasons why I like to set up activities. The first one is it's an activity that we can do together and kids love connection. It's great for bonding. Um, so I will set up activities for us to do while her brother, who's um, nine months old, is having a sleep. So it's something that we can do together and I can add some learning into it. We can talk about some vocab words. I can follow her interest. So that's one way I like to use these play activities as a tool. And the other way is to just spur on some independent play. So by following what interests her, you know, kids are curious. If I can set up a play activity, I find it will just flow on to some independent play. You know, I might be there at the start and then I'll just kind of step away, step away. And I'm not an active part of the play. So they're the two uses that I like to use play activities for. Um, let's get into it. So the first one is heart matching. So you probably noticed with my videos, I love to use our recyclables. I save cardboard. I'm a bit of a cardboard hoarder. <laughs> so using cardboard, and then I had some glitter card stock. I used to have an Etsy shop where I sold greeting cards. So I've got a lot of leftover supplies. So that's why I've gone with the glitter card stock. And you know, it's a different texture. It's that kind of rough texture. Um, so that's why I decided to use it instead of just plain paper or cardstock, it wouldn't matter. I've just got a lot of glitter paper, so I went with that because of the texture. But if you wanted to make your own, you could use colored sand and glue and just glue it to some paper as an option. I also find by using the glitter paper, it's sturdier than just plain paper, which is important to me because I do like my activities to last and this has lasted over a year. When I set this up last year, I wrote the words on it, as you can see there, red, gold, what I did was is I did it all in capital letters. If I did this again now, I would do it all lowercase because we don't actually use capital letters that much. I really want my daughter to be seeing lots of lowercase letters because that's mainly what we write with. Last year, we just did the color matching, as you can see here. Um, whereas this year, I thought I'd try a bit of a memory game. So I turned some over and then um, suggested where's the color red. Um, she wasn't up for it. She wasn't interested in it. I don't push it. It doesn't matter. Um, so we just did some more matching. But that's another option. Turn those ones over and get into a memory game. Where was the red heart? And then try and find the red heart and put that down in the red spot, the gold heart. So just making it a bit more challenging, using skills of concentration, problem solving. I apologize for the noise. The neighbor is getting a garage door in. I can just hear the angle grinder, but I don't have much choice because the kids are asleep now, so I've got to use this time. So I hope it's not too bad. The next activity is Pom Pom Push, which I have done a little video on um, ages ago. I'll just leave it here if you haven't seen it. It's very quick. I think it's under two minutes. And it just shows three different activities that we've done with pom-poms and one of them is a pom-pom push so we have been doing this for so long it is so good for your fine motor skills strengthening those hands but i wanted to make it a little bit more challenging for my daughter so using a cardboard box again i just put some cardstock paper on the top drew a heart and then i grabbed seven different pom-poms that were different sizes and then using scissors i just stepped into the box and depending on what size pom-pom I made the hole for that size and then using sharpies I just colored around it so that it is color matching as well as size matching so as you'll see there are two pink pom-poms so you have to decide well which hole will fit which pink pom-pom so when we were doing this one I asked her to put them in order from smallest to biggest which she did and then she started putting them in each hole from smallest to biggest as well this is an activity I definitely don't have on our shelves for her to access at any time. And that's because pom-poms really are a choking hazard. So I do need to supervise quite closely. And that's another reason why I've just done seven pom-poms because we count them at the end before I put it away to make sure we haven't lost a pom-pom because I'd hate for my son to get it in his mouth. 
The third activity I want to share with you is threading. So this is one we've done both years. I grabbed a piece of green colored cardboard, used a hole punch to hole punch around the outside, and then I couldn't find a shoelace, so I just made my own using a cotton tip and some baker's twine. When I first set this up for her, I made the baker's twine really long, um, and it just got tangled, it just got in the way. So I made it shorter, and it was easier for her to do it. Whereas this year it was still short and she actually got frustrated by it because she didn't want to just go to the next hole. She wanted to skip a few. And so we ran out of the twine. There just wasn't enough. So that's just something to keep in mind about the twine, depending on where your child's up to and what way works for them. This activity is fantastic for concentration, fine motor skills and problem solving. So trying to pull through that cotton tip could be a challenge at times. So she had to problem solve how to do it. The fourth activity was color mixing. I like to reuse bags that we've used for food. So this one, I had done some apple pies in it and had been in the freezer. So I just kept it um, to use in play. I just find it's a great way to get double use out of bags. So what I did is I drew four hearts on it with a Sharpie and then we got four different types of paint. This one I'm using is the Crayola washable paint. You guys do ask me what paint I'm using. This is the first time I've used this one. I usually use Montmartre but this time I'm just trying Crayola because it's been a bit tricky to get that one. I have to go to like a cheapo shop and I haven't been to one of those whereas this one is so readily available at Kmart and other stores like that. So I've gone with the Crayola. Um, it's washable too, but it doesn't matter because it's in the bag. My daughter kept saying when she was doing this squish, squishy, squish. So she's learning new vocab while we're doing activities. Squish, squish, squish. And then I encouraged her to spread out each color so it completely filled each heart. And then we even did a bit of mixing together. Now, because this is mess free, um, I let my son have a go as well. Like I said, he's nine months. Um, and he wasn't as interested with the paint. He was more interested in climbing on the table. <laughs> the fifth one I want to share with you is watercoloring. We have been doing so much more watercoloring than painting. If you look back on my videos of what activities my daughter did in a day, we used to do a lot of painting. But as a mum of two, I just find the cleanup took a little bit longer than I've got time for at the moment. Um, because, you know, when your baby wakes from a nap, there's not a massive amount of time to clean up the paint brushes, take the smock off, etc., etc. So I just find watercolors a lot easier to do. I just put a little container of water and she sits in the area here near our bathroom, which is next to our playroom and will water paint. So I'd even say it's an independent activity, which as I've been saying, I do really like. Um, she has put some on the walls accidentally and it just came off so easily. I do think that is because of the paint we've got in the bathroom. It's very like wash and wear. Come, whatever's on there comes off really easily. So we're a bit lucky there. Um, but yeah, watercolors. So I drew hearts because it is a Valentine's Day theme, but another interest of hers at the moment is traffic lights. So we've been drawing traffic lights and she's been coloring in each light. So once again, follow your child's lead, what they're interested in. It doesn't have to be Valentine's theme. This is just the video I'm doing. The next activity is a Play-Doh invitation. I do really like Play-Doh um, and I really like setting up invitations like this. So on this tray, we've got the Play-Doh, we've got um, some pipe cleaners. There's these lips cookie cutters, as well as these shapes. Um, this shape sorter from Fisher & Paykel has been fantastic. I use it quite a lot in activities. So that's what the pink star's from. And then just some little tip bits that I've found around the place, little foam hearts, etc. If you've got a cheap shop, just have a look around there to see what kind of springs to mind that you could use in Play-Doh to make patterns or even, you know, go outside and you grab some rocks and some twigs. They're going to make patterns as well. That's all what we kind of classify as loose parts, just finding little bits and pieces to add to the Play-Doh. It allows the child to use their imagination to role play. And like I said, great for fine motor strengthening as well as using those skills and of course if you've watched my videos I love pom-poms so I've used pom-poms here as well as well as some crocheted hearts that I had around the place if you'd like me to do a video on different play-doh activities let me know in the comments below because I want to do stuff that's going to help you guys 
We really enjoy using Play-Doh and we do use it heaps. The next play activity I really want to share is bookish play. So this book, Happy Valentine's Day Mouse, um, I bought from Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description box if you want to see it or you can go check it out in my Amazon shop. I did buy it from America because I was really keen to get it. Um, just because I love doing themed play and so this was a really good one I thought. And then using a colouring in book, I found a mouse and a cat. We had some crayons and she coloured this in. So this is what we did when she was 22 months old. So she was really just starting to get into colouring in then, whereas now, you know, she just loves colouring in. It brings her a lot of joy. Back then I used the smaller crayon. As you can see, her grip of the crayon is really quite good. So I didn't feel the need to use the big ones because she was managing really well with the thin standard crayons rather than the jumbo crayons, which we do have as well. Okay, number eight is using um, paper towel roll or toilet paper roll to make lip shape. So here, just dipping it in paint and then onto a piece of paper. So this is a lot of fun and also it makes a great happy Valentine's Day card if you wanna do that as well. When we did it last year, we really stuck with the colours of red and pink, but there's no reason why we couldn't have done rainbow lips. It's amazing what you can make out of paper rolls. The next one is sensory wheat. So I have had this wheat, I made it two and a half years ago. I've got the video here. It is not taste safe, so I used paint. And then I had some wheat left over from making heat packs. Um, so I just used that. That's what I had on hand, but I've also done it with rice as well. Um, if you want to do it with rice and make it taste safe, then use one cup of long grain rice. The longer the grain is better. When I've done it with basmati rice, it just crumbles. It's just not long enough. So using a long grain rice and then under a tablespoon of vinegar, that just helps to hold the color in and then put some food dye in it as well. If you're doing it in a Ziploc bag, then squish, 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 squish. Get your kids involved as well or in a container and just shake it, shake it, shake it until it's completely colored. Whatever suits your family. Friend of mine gave me this ice cube tray and so I've been really excited for Valentine's Day activities so that I could use it as you know, part of that theme. So with this, she did lots of pouring into the hearts with these little scoops. These are scoops I bought for her first birthday. So they're just unlike lolly scoops that you buy for um, lolly jars. They were so inexpensive and we've got a real lot of use out of them. The final activity I want to share with you is salt painting. I've been wanting to do this for ages and I've finally done it. I did it with a Valentine's Day theme. So using some cardboard recyclables, just using a Sharpie, I did hearts and I went from smallest to biggest just because we've been doing that pom-pom activity. So I thought I'd continue with talking about small and big and she was right onto it. As soon as she saw it, she was like small, small, big, big. So using the knowledge that she already had, we just added onto it. And then what I did is I used glue and just glued around each heart and then pour salt on it, left it overnight. As you can see, some of the salt didn't stick as good as it could have, but it didn't matter because in the end, this wasn't about the end product, it was the process. So I put a drop of food dye in this container, lots of different colors, then just poured the water in. This container I bought off eBay ages ago to make icy poles and I was actually gonna make some um, chalk with it as well, but I haven't done any of that. Um, but it worked really well in this activity. I think I'll be using it more with food dye and dyeing um, salt as well as cotton balls. We've done that before, which worked really well. Um, so that's another option if you've got cotton balls and want to use that. Instead, you could glue around the heart and then stick the cotton balls on. And then using these pipettes, we've worked on these for a while now, so she's really quite good with them. The other option is droppers. Both of them are great options for fine motor skills and strengthening. And we just went through it. So she dips in the pipette, you squeeze the top, let go, watch it fill, pull it out, and then squeeze it on a heart. Then she just colored each heart a different color. So of these 10 activities, I'd love to know which one are you gonna try with your child first off? Which one are you excited to try? Let me know once again if a Play-Doh video is of interest to you and if there's anything else that you'd like to see. Um, I'd love to hear what will actually help you guys. And don't forget, we've got our Instagram account where we share the activities pretty much daily. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.